Nebraska gets a close look at Coach Prime and the Buffs this weekend. Does that mean Nebraska starts out 0-2? Locked on Big Ten starts now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We always appreciate it. You know we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, plus on YouTube. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On today's show, Matt Rule versus Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, and the Buffaloes on Saturday, plus other Week 2 storylines that grab my attention, I'll share with you, and our Big Ten Power Rankings. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right, so Matt Rule and Nebraska might be in trouble. Look, I think the general thinking and excitement of Husker fans going into the season was, look, Matt Rule was going to take over this program, going to take over for Scott Frost, and we're going to stop the bleeding, right? Scott Frost had all these one-score losses. They were piling up over the last five years. It's been brutal. Uh, since 2018 to 2022, Scott Frost was 5-22 and 22 in one-score games. That's a lot of Husker fans going, oh, if we only had one good play here or an extra score here, we've been fine. We've been a good team, right? We've talked about this. The second thing I think that Husker fans thought was that they could get out to a quick start with this particular schedule and get some momentum going, which would have been a fresh breath of air, no doubt. Um, Sure, opening on the road at Minnesota was going to be tough. But I think with the new excitement of a new coach, a new season, and the new season opener, I think every fan, the hope was, hey, you get that game. They didn't, but that was the hope going into the season. Then week two versus Colorado. Now, up until this week, um, the thinking of Colorado was this. Look, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, takes over this team that, that won one game last year. And he fired the entire team. He cut everybody, sent them all home. And then he brought in 87 new guys. I'm not exaggerating. 87 new players, either through the transfer portal or the freshmen that were coming in this year. And even if the players were good, conventional wisdom thinks, all right, it's going to take some time to gel. These guys have never played a a game before. You got 11 different guys on the field at one time that never played together. And maybe it was going to take some time. Maybe, Maybe Dion would be good, but not right away, right? That was the thinking. So maybe Nebraska felt like they were catching him at the right time. Wrong. Um, more on that in a moment. So, again, if the Husker fans were dreaming of a 2-0 and start, they would naturally start looking at the next few games on the schedule. Week 3 featuring the Huskers' home opener, night game against Northern Illinois. Check. That's a win. And uh, followed by a home date versus Louisiana Tech. Check. Another win. So... Best case scenario going into the season for Husker fans, the thinking was you get Minnesota, you get Colorado, you get these other two. Now you're 4-0 going into the Michigan game, and Michigan is at Memorial Stadium. It'll be a sold-out crowd. Everybody will be going nuts. But that's not how the season started. Of course, as we know, uh, just last Thursday, another One score loss for Matt Rule now and Nebraska, 13 to 10 in the loss to Minnesota. And by the way, that was a game they absolutely gave away. Absolutely had that thing won and and gave it away. Now they've got to face the hottest team in America that everybody's talking about with Coach Prime and Deion Sanders from Colorado. So it's possible that Nebraska could start out 0-2. And nobody thought that could happen or wanted that to happen. And Deion Sanders taking over this program, making a lot of noise, a lot of hype, and backing it up. That was an impressive win against the defending uh, national champion runner-ups, TCU, over the weekend on the road. And TCU was ranked 17th in the country. And 
also helping him out, of course, was his son, his son, Shador Sanders, who's the quarterback of the team. All he did in his first uh, Power 5 game was throw for a school record 510 yards and four touchdowns, including the game winner with 425 left. You know, it's just been an incredible run just for that first week. I mean, it's a lot of uh, the run, though, the buildup, the transitioning of the team, the practice. Nobody thought they'd do anything. And then having a game like that, that was incredible. It's just one game. I know. But it was incredible. Everybody, that was the story of college football in the first weekend. They also have a five-star two-way player that came with Dion from Jackson, where he was coaching last year, Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter had over 100 yards receiving, and he also had an interception against TCU and dropped another one. Could have had two. He um, is a wide receiver and a defensive back. Never leaves the field. Now, that in and of itself is rare in this day and age, but think about that game Saturday. That was at TCU. That was uh, at Texas. 120 snaps in Texas in September in the daytime. I mean, it had to be like 120 degrees on that field. And that kid never left the field. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible effort. Plus, we're not done here. The Buffaloes had four receivers each get over 100 yards receiving. It's almost unheard of. I personally can only think of one other time it happened. And uh, Clay Helton's USC team did it once. Uh, having three receivers get 100 yards in a game. I think Ohio State did that once. Those are the only instances I can remember off the top of my head, anything remotely like this. Four receivers over 100 yards. And then don't forget on defense, Dion has another kid, Shiloh. Shiloh doesn't get as much attention as Shador. He, uh, Shiloh Sanders had 10 tackles in the game. So the Colorado fan base was already pretty excited about this. And remember, they had 50,000 people at their spring game in the snow in in colorado um that that never happens so they're fired up they're going to be ready for nebraska coming in that's going to be a hostile environment from that ruling company now is it all doom and gloom no no nebraska's defense i thought looked pretty good against minnesota last thursday but shador sanders looks like a more dynamic quarterback than ethan kaliak manis that minnesota featured uh, so you have to take that into consideration. But the question here is, can Nebraska's defense hold uh, four different receivers that are capable of going for 100 yards, hold uh, maybe three of them in check? I don't know. I, I This is going to be really interesting. I still don't know how good TCU is, so I'm trying to gauge this win by the Buffaloes. I know what Nebraska is. I watched every play of that Minnesota game. I, I just don't know. That was just such a phenomenal event, what uh, Colorado did against TCU. The other thing, um, there's a couple bright spots here. TCU did score 42 points on Colorado, and they, got, uh, they rushed for 262 yards. Okay, now we're getting back into Nebraska's wheelhouse here because they like to run the football. And the first uh, and foremost thing is that Jeff Sims cannot turn the ball over. He had three interceptions. That was the thing he cannot afford to do like he did against Minnesota. Secondly, Sims led the Huskers with 90, 91 yards running the option. He was, he was the focal point, obviously, the quarterback of that option attack. Probably will be the case throughout the season. But running back Gabe Urban is also the key. Now, he rushed for 55 yards against Minnesota, which isn't enough here. But, you know, he... He rushed for eight yards per rush. That was his average. That's tremendous. Give him the ball more. I, I would like to see more balance between Sims and Irvin and get that running attack going. They don't have much of a passing attack. So uh, if they're going to have any uh, diversity, they got to have it, uh, different guys running the ball. Can't just be the quarterback every time. So Nebraska needs, needs more of that. More touches from Irvin. He's a bruising running back. That is going to be where Nebraska can have its success against Colorado. So that's how I see my first glance at this game. This used to be a pretty uh, pretty intense rivalry back in the day when they were in the same conference. Nebraska does lead the series 49, 20, and 2. It goes all the way back to 1898. Colorado used to view Nebraska as its main rival, but Nebraska used to view Oklahoma as its main rival. So they, they got all that. They can argue about that all day long. So uh, basically, in a nutshell, here's how I see it. 
The higher the score in this game, that favors Colorado. If it is a lower scoring game, you can bet on Nebraska. Okay? So we'll figure it out together. Going to watch that game on Saturday, no doubt about it. All your comments are welcome uh, at Talk Big Ten. Uh, check us out there and on uh, Twitter. And also, uh, give me comments here on YouTube. Got a lot of comments from the, the podcast we did yesterday on Drew Aller. Uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. We'll take a look at the other matchups coming up in week two around the Big Ten. The coaching roulette for Michigan as they're rotating coaches while Jim Harbaugh is out and the latest quarterback plan for the Ohio State. All that coming up right here on Lockdown Big Ten. We are brought to you by eBay Motors. And look, Dion just showed you how to put together, I don't know if it's a championship team, but it's a team that can win lots of pieces, lots of parts. And everything has to be a perfect fit. And it's the same thing when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage. And look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, competence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get yourself the right parts, the right fit, the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, so we got a lot of games in the Big Ten this week, and um, we're going to get to so 14 games, so no uh, Big Ten teams versus Big Ten teams. We had a few of those last week, so a lot of games going out there. Also, I'll get this crawl going on the bottom of our screen here. A uh, new website I want to mention, uh, talkbigten.com. All right, we got all our stuff there. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Talkbig10.com. Okay, so let's uh, let's figure this out. The 14 games, and we already mentioned the Nebraska-Colorado game, so we'll put that aside. Uh, two Friday Night Lights games going on. We got Indiana State at Indiana Friday. Tom Allen, adamant. He goes, we shouldn't be playing on Friday. That's for high school. There's a lot of people that feel that way, but we got two Big Ten games on Friday. And IU is going to use this game to try and determine their starting quarterback. Taven Jackson will start this time. Uh, Brendan Soresby will come in later. They flipped that role, those roles, last uh, week against Ohio State. They both get another shot to show what they can do against a team not named Ohio State. So hopefully some, one of these two guys for Indiana can move the ball against Indiana State. By the way, side note, Indiana State coached by Kurt Mallory, the former Michigan Wolverine, and also um, he's the son of late Bill Mallory, who used to coach the Hoosiers when I went to school there back in the day. Also on Friday, Illinois is at Kansas. Illinois had a big scare against Toledo. Now, Toledo's good. Toledo's a good MAC team, but they needed a last-second field goal to beat them, and it's going to be interesting to see how Illinois bounces back, goes on the road, and takes on a Kansas team that, frankly, is better than most people think they are on a Saturday, the Ohio state Buckeyes, they're taking on Youngstown state. Or as I call it the Jim Trestle bowl, because he has long histories with both of those schools. And um, Ryan day says that both Kyle McCord and Devin Brown will play quarterback. And I see Brown playing a lot more in this game than he did in the Indiana game. Most, it was mostly McCord and a little bit of Brown uh, in the Indiana game. But let me tell you this, I'm going to tell you, this quarterback competition at Ohio State is not finished. So it, it, it could be back and forth, short leash. Somebody struggles, the other guy's going in. And it looks like that's how it's going to be for the rest of the way, it seems like, for Ohio State, unless that thing settles down. Penn State is hosting Delaware for a noon tilt at Happy Valley. It's the first time these two schools have ever met. Should be an easy, breezy win for Penn State. Drew Aller should have another big day, especially since I propped him up so much in our podcast yesterday. Michigan is hosting UNLV. Get your bingo cards ready. All right, here we go with the coaching roulette since Jim Harbaugh is out and they're rotating who's coaching what game and whatnot. As you know, defensive coordinator Jesse Minter held down the fort against East Carolina. Check, got the win. Now the pressure falls on to uh, offensive coordinator uh, Sharon Moore, who was also suspended for one game last week. 
He's going to come in and co-coach in this game with special teams coach Jay Harbaugh uh, in the first half. Then the head coaches will be Moore and running backs coach Mike Hart will handle the second half. Got it? Got it. All right. Iowa is at Iowa State. Now, the only thing I care about here is Cade McNamara healthy enough to lead this team to at least 25 points. You all know that's the threshold they got to hit for people to keep jobs, right? So uh, they scored 24 last week, but they won by 10. Michigan State hosts Richmond. Uh, Spartan fan, I got a question for you. How bad did it hurt to watch former wide receiver Keon Coleman score three touchdowns for Florida State in a nationally televised game against LSU this weekend? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I'll bet that hurt a little bit. And maybe it's too soon. I apologize. We'll talk about that later. Uh, also, Northwestern hosting UTEP. Hopefully, that late touchdown for Northwestern against Rutgers can get a little something going because they could get nothing going, and they just need some kind of momentum. Wisconsin travels to Washington State. That is a long trip. It might be a hostile trip, hostile environment, because Washington State no longer has a home next year in part because they feel like the Big Ten helped blow up the Pac-12. Now they have nowhere to go. Now they got a Big Ten team in their stadium. It's going to be loud and raucous in there. Maryland hosting Charlotte following their season opener against Towson. Look, Maryland's going to be good this year. They're going to have some tougher teams on their schedule. But starting out with Towson and Charlotte, it's kind of like an old man just slowly slipping into a bathtub for a nice comfy bubble bath. Man, it's they'll play harder teams later, but they're I'm sorry. Uh but it's it's an easy start to the schedule for Maryland. Uh, another home game for Minnesota this weekend. They host Eastern Michigan. The Gophers will have uh, nine days, of course, to prepare for this one because they played last Thursday. And finally, Temple is at Rutgers in a regional battle, and the Scarlet Knights have won six straight in this series. So that's a glance, a first glance at the schedule. We still have some more work to do this week looking at things and how they're all going to shake out. But uh, that's it. A lot of games on the Big Ten schedule. And coming up in a moment, I want to see, I'm going to show you guys what my colleagues at Locked In picked for the top 25. They put out their own top 25 college football poll each and every week in addition to AP, coaches poll, all that stuff. We're going to see how they did that. And then we're going to get into our weekly feature that we always do here, and it is uh, my Big Ten power rankings. So we will have all that. And in the meantime, I want to thank everybody for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every day. And uh, in addition, remind you that since college football season is here, we have the Lockdown College Football Kickoff Live show every Friday from 11 to 1 Eastern time. Uh, a lot of input from all the Lockdown hosts that go live. Then they repackage it, edit it up, and do the audio-only version, How if you guys listen to this podcast on audio only. But the video version here on this uh, YouTube channel uh, that you're watching here, it goes on. It, they do it live from 11 to 1, Eastern Time Friday, and it's on all the Lockdown College stations, including here, Lockdown Big Ten. So check that out. It's something you don't want to miss. In the meantime, I always ask you to go ahead and subscribe on YouTube. Help us out. I'm asking you to do that. Thank you very much. That helps us out a lot. It's free, and it gets you in the loop. Uh, you can share, follow, and like Locked on Big Ten. So coming up. Our next weekly feature, we'll have all of our rankings and listings and our Big Ten power rankings. That's all right here on Locked On Big Ten. All right, the first thing I want to do here, I want to see what my colleagues did in putting together the top 25. They all voted. They put it together. Nice little graphic. I'm going to put it here on the screen, and then we'll get to our own Big Ten power rankings, and we'll see how your team did, okay? Here we go. Here's theirs on the screen. For those who are listening on audio, I'll describe this. Let's see. The Lockdown Top 25 poll voted by the Lockdown College host for week two. Georgia, number one. Michigan, two. No surprise there. Bama, up to three. And Florida State, number four. And Ohio State at number five after their lackluster performance against the Hoosiers. But we got two Big Ten teams in the top five. Three in the top six because there's Penn State. And uh, let's see, we don't have another Big Ten team on this list until number 19 with the Wisconsin Badgers, followed by number 20, Colorado and Deion Sanders. How about that? Um, and that is it. The Iowa Hawkeyes do not crack the top 25 poll here. 
Okay. Interesting. Again, this is out from the lockdown hosts. Um, they do that to each and every week. So there you go. Uh, take a quick look at that. Now, appreciate them doing that. Let's put up on the screen our very own po- uh, Big Ten uh, power rankings to start from top to bottom. And we started off with Michigan at number one. Going to move Penn State up to number two. They looked really good. Spent a lot of time on this podcast talking about uh, Drew Aller and that game against West Virginia. They still have some some uh, question marks. If there was a weakness against West Virginia, they gave up some some running uh, some rushing yardage early, and then the kicking game. They missed a couple of kicks. They had to kick one late in the game, even though it was already over. People accused them of running up the score. I was like, no, no, no. We got to find out. We got a kicker here. So, so we got that. We got Michigan. Uh, By the way, with uh, Jim Harbaugh, one down, two to go on the suspension, followed by Penn State. And number three, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Look, I don't think they're a top three team in the country right now, as they were ranked earlier in a lot of polls before this week. But they are a top three team in the Big Ten. And maybe we'll see a big jump out of Kyle McCord uh, here in, uh, in week two. Wisconsin at number four. No air attack, but Ches Malusi and Braylon Allen, uh, Allen, uh, formidable. Two hundred and ninety-eight yards and four touchdowns against the uh, against Buffalo. At number five, we got the Iowa Hawkeyes. Their defense looks pretty good. It really does. Uh, Cade McNamara, good enough, but playing hurt. That's a big question. See how that lingers. Maryland at number six. Look, Maryland's going to be good. Kind of poke fun on them earlier. Yeah, they kind of had what I call a scrimmage against Towson earlier. Purdue, I'm going to throw them a bone here. Purdue was in the bottom three of a lot of people's polls going into the season. I'm going to put them at number seven. Uh, they're not near the bottom. That was a quality loss against Fresno State. Uh, by that, I mean they showed a lot of talent. Hudson Card is going to be a good quarterback this year in the Big Ten. Uh, Ryan Walters defense did give up 39 points. That was a lot. That was a lot. They need to shore that up at number eight. We have Minnesota. Now their defense is good, but, uh, they might've lost to Nebraska without the good defense offense still needs a little bit of work there for PJ Fleck, Michigan state at number nine. I was a little nervous that first half for Spartans fan against the Chippewas. But then they finally broke that game open and won it rather handily, 31-7. to seven. They got Richmond and then Washington next on the schedule. At number 10, the Finding Illini. Again, I made the point earlier that Toledo is a good football team. So, they, But they needed that last-second field goal to beat them, and they did. So there, uh, there's the top 10. I did uh, not leave anybody out. We got uh, the next slide here, Nebraska at number 11. Costly turnovers, and uh, they continue to have one-score losses. Again, their defense looks pretty good, but the running game is uh, strong as long as it's not all Jeff Sims. Rutgers at number 12. Most impressive thing about their game against Northwestern, they had the two separate 16-yard touchdown drives, or 16-play, I'm sorry, two separate 16-play drives. That's impressive. You don't see that anywhere. That's good coaching. Because if you can keep rolling the ball with that kind of momentum and not making mistakes, penalties, and turnovers, and and put together a 16-play drive, that's some good coaching there. Indiana at number 13, and this team has a good defense. It's a pretty good defense. They uh, they impressed me against Ohio State. They have some good skill players, but they still have huge questions at quarterback, and that is the whole season is going to ride on that. And finally, Northwestern, just going to be a tough year for for David Braun. There's there's no way around it. So that is it, our Big Ten power rankings. Let me know what you think. Hit me up at TalkBig10. Uh, comment here on YouTube, and don't forget to check out our new website, talkbig10.com. Invite you to uh, look at all that as well. So, uh, in addition to Twitter and YouTube, don't forget those ways to contact me, but also subscribe, subscribe down below. Appreciate it if you would do that and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available every day. We release these things first thing in the morning. Now I want you to check out Locked On Sports Today, the podcast for the latest on everything else going on in sports. Get you all caught up. In the meantime, we'll see you the next time. Thanks for joining us. I'm Craig Scheman for Locked On Big Ten.